Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is a continuation of the story of Mrs. Metcalf's Stiff the Bank kit to the Supreme Court of Canada, and this was an editorial by her hometown newspaper titled Abuse of Process, complaining about my help in her staller foreclosure. So, there's the article, Abuse of Process, roared Patrick Dare, the editor of the Smith Falls Record News, about Jean Metcalf case against the banks. Poor Jean abusing the banks. The Jean, on the 26th of January, 1983, the Jean Metcalf affair is a modern day example of abuse of the court process. Though she had not made a mortgage payment on her Elmsley Street home since last April, Mrs. Metcalf snarled the Bank of Montreal's repossession action in the courts for months with the enthusiastic assistance of Ottawa bank fighter extraordinaire John Turmel. Mrs. Metcalf was not represented by a lawyer. Instead, Mr. Turmel talked about banks committing genocide and other such nonsense. Lanark County Court Judge John Matheson was understandably upset with the case, calling it the most difficult foreclosure he had seen. Judge Matheson signed the bank's writ of possession and told Mr. Turmel he didn't want to see him in a Lanark court ever again. Good for Judge Matheson. There's a lot of sympathy in the community for Mrs. Metcalf. People are rightly concerned with her plight. She says she suffers from total allergy syndrome. Nobody wants to see a well-liked citizen like Mrs. Metcalf suffer. She's known in the community for helping people. A cash donation was sent to this newspaper earlier this week for Mrs. Metcalf, and supporters have attempted to organize a fund to her for her benefit. Letters to the editor have sung her praises. However, if Mrs. Metcalf is truly allergic to the 20th century, she should be in some kind of protective environment, like a hospital. Yeah, her home isn't good enough. The state of medical practice has never been more advanced. If doctors cannot cure the illness Mrs. Metcalf says she has, they can certainly provide a sterile environment where she can live. No, they can't. Paul Howard, a respected lawyer and leading town councillor, has suffered much unwarranted abuse over this issue. So has the Bank of Montreal. The personal nature of these verbal attacks is disturbing. The bank and Mr. Howard have been more than patient with Mrs. Metcalf, allowing her many months to find alternative accommodation without a cent of compensation for the Elmsley Street house she continued to occupy. The bank has also absorbed the costs of fighting the case against Mr. Turmel in the courts. Ended up costing them 45 grand, big money in those days. In the end, however, it's the other bank customers who are the victims in this case. Money does not grow on trees, and the bank will have to pass along its cost to other consumers. The Metcalf case shows just how vulnerable our financial institutions and courts can be to delay tactics of people like Mr. Turmel. Yeah! When the legal process is abused, it is fit and proper for authorities like Judge Matheson to chastise the culprits. Well, chastise me all you want, just don't change the rules. My answer on the uh, da, 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 March 9, 83, published, Judge Editor Taken to Task by Termel. <coughs> Sir, now that Jean Metcalf is safe in her home until May 1st, I must take the time to answer your January 26, 1983 editorial abuse of process, in which you stated with respect to her legal defense strategy that, quote, Mr. Termel talked about banks committing genocide and other nonsense, unquote. Well, I must challenge you on both points. I have an applied science degree from Carleton University in Ottawa. As the only electrical engineer in Canada to have specialized in banking systems, I suggest that I have a far more profound understanding of the mechanics of the system than you do. I point out that the case included proofs not only in simple high school algebra, but also in the advanced engineering mathematics of differential equations, Laplace transformations, and transcendental functions. It was dismissed by Judge Matheson as simplistic, not wrong, or nonsense. Without even reading the case. That's a conclusion you've come to by yourself. On Monday, December 20th, 1982, Alan Wilford, president of the Farmers Survival Association, stated on CBC's The Journal that, quote, when farmers are put out of production in a world that's starving, that's genocide, unquote. When the banks put even one farmer out of production, more people will have to starve than would have starved had that farmer been allowed to continue producing food. In Jean's case, the danger to life is closer to home and more evident. She cannot go to a hospital, as you and Judge Matheson suggested, because she's allergic to chemicals and disinfectants present there. With no other safe refuge, if the courts should authorize the bank's seizure of her home with its purified environment, her life would be threatened. Can you imagine the trauma of having to beg cold-hearted judges not to seize her life support system, knowing they refuse to accept that her life is even at stake?
The pressure she has endured trying to get stays of execution on her eviction into a hostile world is not unlike the pressure endured by a death row prisoner trying to get stays of his execution. Her only crime was that she helped others free of charge, and when she got sick, she had insufficient savings to fall back on. Jean is a victim of the unsafe engineering design of the usury banking system. When none of the elected politicians could be of any help, as an engineer who sworn an oath of responsibility to assure proper systems design, I was forced to act. Though my actions have been described as those of bank fighter, actually they are those of banking systems engineer who is attempting to correct the system's deadly flaw, or at least reduce the re destructive effects of its loan sharking on the victims. Usury is loan sharking. Usury is not excessively high interest. It is interest on money. Interest on money is different from interest on livestock. Interest on livestock can be paid because livestock reproduce. But since money does not reproduce, interest on money can never be paid. The contract bearing usury is properly named mort gage from the French words mort meaning death and gage meaning gamble because it's not physically possible for all those farmers who've taken out mortgage to repay both the principal and the interest when the banks only put out the principal. Losing the death gamble results in foreclosure and confiscation of the property pledged. The Bible tells us that, quote, the wicked is he who has seized houses he did not build, unquote, Job 2019. When I pointed out to Judge Matheson that seizing Jean's house was enforcing white-collar loan sharking, it could not be denied. Today, judges must legally enforce up to 60% interest on money. Just 20 years ago, enforcers of those kinds of rates were put in jail for loan sharking. 500 years ago, enforcers of any usury were even put to death. When the Israelites complained to Nehemiah about the wicked having seized their property and their children, he rebuked the nobles, the bankers who exact usury, and the rulers, the politicians who legislate, and the judges who enforce usury. He stated, you're exacting usury, let the exacting of usury stop, Nehemiah 5.10. History shows several examples. Over a hundred years ago, Abraham Lincoln issued interest-free Lincoln greenbacks. Before the American Revolution, the colonies issued interest-free script money, as did the town of Raymond, Alberta, during the Great depression. With the electronic revolution today, it's even simpler. The bank's computers, which are now programmed to charge both usury and service charges, can simply be restricted to a pure service charge by a small programming correction. Electronically, the exacting of usury can easily be stopped. If the leaders refused to stop, Jesus showed us the way. With no legal recourse available, he chased the moneylenders from the temple with a whip in the only incident of physical violence on his record. With the availability of court challenges, the whip would not have been necessary, since the genocide of usury is obvious to all but those who do not wish to see. In light of his action, do you think Jesus would agree with you that it's an abuse of the process for me to use the justice system to defend Gene from the wicked bankers? Or rather, would he agree with me that it's an abuse of the process for the wicked to use the justice system to enforce the collections on their loan sharking activities? Since the justice system has so far chosen to continue being the enforcers for the banks, there's no choice but to slow down the rate of their destruction of our life support systems by appealing as many foreclosures as possible all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, thereby plugging up the courts. Each appeal can become a legal protest, blocking up the higher echelons of the courts and slowing down the erosion of our industrial base. Though the scientific invite indictment of the usury death gamble has three times made it to the Supreme Court of Canada and three times been dismissed, on the third try, the court reserved this decision for further consideration before dismissing. The court may be mellowing to the horrible truth about the usury banking system. I expect to be back before them to try again within a few months. My high-tech analysis proving that interest on money kills has rarely been publicly challenged because I always offer my detractors my standard thousand to one bet that it is not nonsense to let the exacting of usury stop, but rather it is the solution to all our monetary problems. After almost two years of personally offering to bet to thousands of Ottawa's bankers and economists, every single one backed down from betting four quarters against my thousand dollars. I bet you will too, but to give you every chance to find a technical error and set the banking system's engineer straight on his misconceptions about the engineering design of the banking system, I'm sending 
sending along a copy of Jean's argument. When you're unable to find a flaw in the logic, I'd appreciate a retraction of your uninformed and technically unqualified opinion of my advanced engineering analysis. J.C. Termel, the banking systems engineer, Ottawa.